I can still remember the day my 21-year-old son, who's my oldest, the day he started to crawl. It was before he was a year old. I'm not sure what age he exactly was, but I remember the day. I remember the feelings I was going through. I remember the excitement that, oh my gosh, my son, he's crawling. And you have to understand, this is my first child, and like your first child, everything is a first, and it's beautiful, and it's unbelievable, and our children are geniuses. That lasted for about 10 seconds. And then I had the feeling of terror overwhelm me. So I looked around. We were living in a house of horrors. My house hadn't been baby-proofed. I'd never thought about baby-proofing it, because until that point... I was carrying, or my wife was carrying our son everywhere. Or he was in a playpen. He wasn't moving. He was just gurgling and rolling. He wasn't doing anything. But all of a sudden now he was mobile. He could get into things. And as you look around, your house now is one big weapon. It's a torture chamber. Because you're seeing it from the eye level of an infant, not as an adult. We had to start changing things. We had to go get those little latches that you do on all of the drawers and the knife cabinets and all where the bleach is. And we had to protect the stairs and we had to rearrange furniture because the sharp pointy edges of the coffee tables. Everything had to change. We basically had to baby proof our home or I like to call it bubble wrapping. We had to protect everything. <laughs> you remember when your child, the first time they go outside to ride their bike. <laughs> And it's like we're wrapping bubble wrap around it because we're so terrified that something's going to happen, especially our first children. Now, after our first children, they kind of break us in and we're, we're not as anal when it comes to that. And I believe in protecting our children. I believe in baby-proofing, especially for infants. But can you imagine if today, my son is now 21, can you imagine if we still had our house and we were baby-proofing it for him? Can you imagine sitting at the dinner table with a 21-year-old who is shaving, works full-time, driving is completely independent. But can you imagine if we took his knife from him and we still cut his steak or meat for him? Because he couldn't do it himself. Could you imagine that we still had to wrap him in bubble wrap? That we were protecting the home and we still had the cabinets and the drawers and everything protected that he couldn't go into? Because we couldn't trust him at 21 to make those kind of decisions, adult decisions. Could you imagine doing that? Now, I know you're laughing right now thinking, oh, that's being an idiot. Really? What the heck is going on with America in the workplace? Over the last 20 years, I've been watching a progression, and not a good one, where we have overregulated and stifled, adding stifling guidelines in the workplace. We're baby-proofing the workplace. A place where there are adults, not children, not infants, but where there are adults with common sense. And we have so over-regulated that we are stifling creativity, connection, communication, collaboration, cooperation. We become a morgue in the workplace because everybody's afraid. Everybody is afraid to say or do anything. They might get into trouble with it. When did Americans wake up looking to be offended? When did we become so sensitive that humor now, joking around, is outlawed? What happened to the American workforce? Because we are now children. We're infants. Everything is baby-proofed. We're wrapped in bubble wrap every day because our professionals, our owners, are afraid that something could happen. That 1% that's coming to work looking to be offended, that is overly sensitive, that overhears a conversation they're not even a part and they file a complaint. Now you're asking, Ed, where are you getting all this? I'll tell you. I travel all around. I go into businesses, I'm invited in to help them change the culture. Because I love work, and I believe work could be fun, and should be fun. If we're going to work 8 to 10 hours a day, 40 years of our life, it better be fun. We better enjoy it and want to go there. And I believe businesses, corporations, professionals, they should have that same attitude. So I come into a business and I help them change a culture. I'm seeing the cultures are unbelievable, not in a great way. I remember going into some of these cultures, like there was one here a little while back. I went into it my first day. I brought our team in with us because we wanted to show the other team how a healthy, happy, excited team works together. We're a family. That's how I see it. In our workplace, we are a family. We enjoy and love what we're doing. 
Can't wait to do it every day. We're going in, we're talking with these people. And in one day and 10 minutes, we got written up on 10 HR violations, or what I call baby proofing violations. One was joking around, because that could be insensitive. That could offend somebody for joking around. Another one was somebody did a really good job in sales. I patted him on the back. I said, congratulations, great job. I wrote up for that because that could be sexist. That could be a hostile work environment, patting somebody on the back like that, touching somebody. We have to create this sterile environment. We can't touch. It's a morgue. It's all dead. And that was the problem with their team. They were dead. Everyone was afraid to do anything. It was a morgue. It was cold, medicinal. Also got wrote up because one of the people did such an outstanding job, they got an award that day. And because I didn't give the award to everybody as a participation award where everybody gets a trophy so that nobody gets their feelings hurt. Oh, good Lord. Please tell me this was a joke. I thought for sure I was going to wake up any moment and know that I'm back on earth again and not in the twilight zone. What the heck has happened to the American workforce? Why are we baby-proofing adults? Why are we baby-proofing the workplace? I believe in regulation. I believe in guidelines and policies, but they must be a win-win. They cannot stifle. We need to protect the culture, not control it. And that's what we're trying to do. Just like I was trying to control my home for a one-year-old. And yes, we should do that if they're one years old. Because they don't know any better. They're children. But can you imagine treating your employees, your customers like children? Be careful what you wish for. That's what you'll get. When we treat our employees like that, when we're treating the marketplace like that, that's what we're going to get. We're going to get one-year-old results, one-year-old efficiency, one-year-old connection. That's not what we want. we got to stop this baby-proofing. Owners, lawyers, professionals, please hear me. We've got to allow our employees, our workplace, to fall down and hurt themselves at times. We can't wrap them in bubble proof every time they go to work. I know a lot of this has probably happened for good intentions. The problem is it's hurting us. It's killing the workforce. It's killing our efficiency and productivity. People are not happy. Nobody wants to be at work anymore. And part of it is because we're baby proofing it. We're treating them like one-year-olds. Find your passion in the workplace and express it and allow it. And watch what will happen as you bring energy back into the workplace and fun, creativity, connection, communication. Watch how you make it rain in your workplace. And if your workplace decides they don't want to change and they want to continue the baby proofing, then I highly suggest you find a workplace that will treat you like an adult and will honor your effort. My name is Ed Carcary and I'd love to connect with you. You can find me at edcarcary.com. Find your passion, you'll find your life.